Hello, I'm Ian from Brinsley Products and this video is one of a series of tips and advice to help you get the best from your Brinsley incubator and achieve the best possible hatch rates. And in this video I'm going to look at humidity in incubation. Humidity is one of the four key variables in any incubator, uh, the others being temperature, turning and ventilation. And overall the key point about humidity is that short-term variations in humidity are fine, no problem at all. It's the average long-term humidity over the entire incubation period that's critical to getting the best possible hatch rate. So what do we mean by humidity? Humidity is expressed as a percentage RH, percentage relative humidity. And the reason it's expressed like that is because it's the amount of water vapour that can be accommodated in any one volume of air. And as that air increases in temperature, then it can accommodate more water vapour. So this means in practice, if you have your incubator set up cold in your incubation room, you plug it in, as the temperature climbs to incubation temperature, then the humidity will fall. And it's that drop in humidity that uh, we're trying to compensate for in, in an incubator to, to offset the effect of the temperature rise, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So what effect does this have on the egg? Well, eggs are porous. Um, they have tiny pores in the shells and eggs will lose moisture as soon as they are laid at a very low level. So they're drying out effectively. The effect on the egg is that this increases the size of the airspace. And if you've ever candled an egg, you'll know what I mean by this. The airspace is at the round end of the egg and gradually increases with time as water is evaporated through the shell. So when we're incubating an egg, and we're controlling humidity, what we're actually doing is controlling that rate of evaporation through the shell and therefore controlling how large that airspace grows as the embryo develops. Why does this matter? Well, that airspace is critical because it's the first air that the chick will breathe as it's about to hatch. So usually a day or so before it actually breaks through the shell, the chick will, the embryo will, will break through into the airspace start to take its first breaths um, and prepare to crack out of the shell. If that airspace is too small, the chick won't have enough air to breathe and that process will stop. The chick will die fully formed inside the, the shell. If humidity has been too low, the airspace is very large, then the chick will be rather dry and might struggle to get out of the shell. So that's what you're trying to do when controlling humidity and incubation is to get that airspace about the right size. Large variability between different species, large variability between one egg and another. Um, porosity of eggshell is very variable. So if you have two eggs from even the same parent bird, they will lose humidity at often quite different rates. So what does this mean for your incubator? Well, first off, it does help if your incubator has a humidity readout, and better still if it has active humidity control, which gives you the ability to control precisely the humidity in your incubator, and increasingly, Brinsley incubators have that feature built in. So, how do you achieve correct humidity for your eggs? Well, the best way of doing that is to weigh the eggs throughout incubation. And the reason for doing that is because as they lose moisture, they're also losing weight and it gives you a measurable guide as to whether you're getting humidity correct. So for most eggs, they should lose between 12 and 14% of their weight from the first day you set them through to the day they're due to hatch. And if they're losing weight faster than that, then you should increase humidity to reduce the evaporation from the egg. And correspondingly, if they're losing weight too slowly, you could use lower humidity in your incubator. Most people don't do that, it's quite a lot of hassle and involves drawing graphs. If you're interested, then there's information on our website about how to achieve that. The second way of uh, checking humidity is correct is by candling. And by candling your egg, you can see the development of that airspace I was talking about. So you can check against instructions in our incubators to see whether the airspace is growing at about the right rate. So the third and most widely used 
technique for getting humidity correct in an incubator is to have an incubator with a humidity display and set it as per manufacturer's guidelines or published guidelines for your species of egg. In most cases that means setting it for about 45 to 50 percent uh, from day one of incubation through to a day or two before they're due to hatch and that way they'll achieve roughly the right amount of moisture loss and the airspace will have developed correctly. If the airspace doesn't develop correctly, the biggest risk actually is having humidity too high because what happens then is the airspace is too small and the chick will reach fully development but it won't be able to get out of the egg because the airspace is too small for it to, uh, to start breathing properly before it hatches. Typically then you'll have late death of the embryo. Uh, if you have humidity too low, the airspace is too large it tends to be a less critical problem. Obviously, it means you get slightly smaller chicks, maybe a little drier, but um, they tend to hatch slightly better than if humidity has been too high. Hatching is different. Hatching requires humidity to be quite high because what you're trying to achieve there is moisture around the, the air of the hatching egg to stop membranes drying as the chick emerges from the egg. So aim for at least 60% uh, humidity at the hatching stage literally for the last day or two of incubation. It's actually naturally elevated anyway because as soon as the eggs start to chip and start to break out then you, your humidity in the incubator will rise as a result of, of that moisture they're giving off. So in summary it's the average humidity over incubation period that's important. Short-term variation doesn't matter. It's better to have humidity if it's going to be wrong, it's better that it's low rather than high. High humidity is more likely to cause embryo death at the end of incubation period. Um, if you can weigh eggs and monitor weight loss, that's ideal. Otherwise, follow manufacturer's guidance. Um, and if you have an incubator with humidity display, and better still, fully automatic control of humidity, which allows you just to dial up the humidity that you, you need, then so much the better and it makes life a lot easier. Anyway, thank you.